to be us means that they gotta be them. Now that sounds fairly simple on the surface, but what happens when we think about others separately from ourselves, particularly when they don't walk like us, talk like us, think like us, and certainly dress like us? Hmm, anybody come to mind? How about teenagers? I don't know who started it, but there's a war going on. It's been going on for at least, oh, the last few thousand years between parents and teens. It's a bloodless war, but it's a war nevertheless because we've got to get these young people in line. We've got to get them to think like us because then they will be us. Well, I don't know if Pink Floyd was talking about my generation or my father's generation or my father's father's generation, but every generation always thinks that teenagers have gotten it all wrong. But here's where Pink Floyd had it right. And after all, we're only ordinary men and women. Our great task is to really find what we have in common, not what makes us different. To do that, we have to do something magical. We have to talk to each other. But more importantly than that, we have to listen. When we talk about Pentecost, we often focus on the imagery of tons of fire. But as a friend once said to me, was it a miracle of the ear or a miracle of the tongue? I thought hard. I said, well, it had to be a miracle of the ear because I've been in rooms where everyone's been talking and there hasn't been a lot of understanding. And that's when it degenerates into us and them. Well, if it's a miracle of the ear, they had to listen. You know, I found in my relationships with my young people, my players, my students, my sons, my daughter, that when I've listened and grown to appreciate what they're saying, there's not so much them anymore, but it's just us. And that's really just this. When I start to think about myself and right relationship with my children, with my students, with my players, that means I can actually learn to listen and appreciate them. Sometimes I'm shocked at what they say. Sometimes I'm shocked at what they hear. But that's because I'm hearing it with 50-year-old ears, and they're hearing it with 19, 17, 20-year-old ears. When I listen to my son sing the praises of Frank Sinatra, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. And then I realized, hey, I gotta borrow this kid's Frank Sinatra collection and put it on my iPod. That was about the same time he discovered, who are these Motown people? You know, sometimes it's not so much what my kids say. It's how they say what they want me to hear. It's less of they said what, and more of they meant what. Sometimes in listening to my children, I've learned the value of learning to shut up. And you better believe it's really, really hard as dad, the all seeing, all knowing, all everything, force of nature in their world to shut up. But sometimes being quiet and listening to your young people can be the best gift you can give them. After all, they've heard your voice for a lot of years. Maybe it's time for you to hear their voices. If we're really going to be honest with ourselves, it's not so much us and them, but it's we and what we can do together. You know, if you think about Christ, that's all he ever talked about. He never focused on us and them. It wasn't the Pharisees versus the faithful. It wasn't the poor versus the rich. It wasn't the Jew versus the Greek or the Roman. 
it was about we. So there's us, and there's them, and there's we. You can decide if your children will appreciate the we in their life. The we being the poor, the we being the rich, the we being the disabled, the we being the black, or the white, or the tall, or the popular, or the unpopular, or the short. We all have a connection. And the more we can listen, whether I'm young or whether I'm old, we can learn to appreciate each other as God the Father does.